My fellow citizens, I speak to you today to tell you some basic truths that you haven't been hearing when it comes to COVID-19. Firstly, a little about me. I'm an internal medicine doctor currently practicing in Massachusetts. I grew up in the United Kingdom where I went to medical school. And the UK, like the USA, has unfortunately also been very badly affected by the virus. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I have treated a lot of COVID-19 patients in the hospital, ranging from mildly unwell to bordering on needing the ICU. I've looked them in the eye, comforted them through my face shield, and spoken to their anxious families over the phone. Fortunately, nearly all have had a good recovery. On top of treating patients, I should also add as well that I've had coronavirus myself, so know what it's like. I'm coming to you from a place of both personal and professional experience. I want to tell you that we are stuck in a trap here with coronavirus, and I'm going to tell you why. As you all know, our lives and the whole world has been turned upside down since the beginning of the year. As COVID-19 has swept across the world, countries everywhere struggled to deal with it. The initial aim of all lockdowns was to prevent hospital surges, and that appears to have been achieved in most places. As the country and the world reopens, we are left with several dilemmas as to how we now deal with the illness. Firstly, let's be completely honest here and come from this place. The coronavirus is not going away. I repeat, it's not going to disappear. That was a reality very soon after it began spreading like wildfire around the world at the end of last year. The problem is that because we are dealing with a virus that affects people very differently and has such a high asymptomatic rate, data suggests over 50% of people infected have zero symptoms, barely a sneeze. This means that coronavirus is unfortunately impossible to contain. That's unless we do, number one, test everyone on the planet every couple of weeks, which would cost trillions of dollars. Number two, employ millions of people worldwide whose sole job it is to contact trace, since in our countries, we can't use smartphones to track everybody's movements for obvious reasons. Number three, stay in some form of lockdown indefinitely, which we know is not possible. We are thus stuck in a trap here. Start moving again in two weeks and virus cases go up in two weeks. Start moving again in two months and the virus cases will go up in two months. Start moving again in two years and it'll happen in two years. That's why I'm here to tell you that our goal cannot be complete suppression of cases. That won't happen, but to go slow and expect a rise in numbers as people start moving around again. The virus is not going to be eliminated, but what we want to do is achieve mitigation of cases and consequences. In other words, try our best to have as few cases and hospitalizations as possible. But that number will never be zero. Fortunately, as we get more data coming in, the overall death rate and hospitalization rate is getting lower and lower. Indeed, it may well be under well under 1% with most people affected recovering at home. This is especially true as we test more and more people with zero or minimal symptoms whose results are returning positive. The problem, though, is that if we simply allow coronavirus to spread, even one in every 100 people hospitalized would overwhelm our healthcare system. So let's Always keep in mind this one important thing. The chances of getting seriously sick from COVID-19 if you don't have risk factors is extremely low. In fact, some estimates have suggested that children have more chance of being hit by lightning than getting seriously ill from coronavirus. In today's 24-7 media age, you will of course see a lot of sensationalist stories about people who got badly affected by coronavirus, but the reality is that a lot of these individual cases are outliers. There are always going to be outliers with any illness, young healthy people who die of the flu each year or collapse with heart attacks. As tragic and sad as these cases are, we have to keep this perspective. There's been so much media hysteria in amongst the facts and it's crucial we know the truth and have a sense of overall real risks. A healthy 19 year old is not the same as a 91 year old. So who are the at-risk groups? Two of the biggest are the elderly or those with chronic medical conditions, including diabetes, heart and lung disease. And these are the people who we must protect above all others. Again, for some perspective, even if you are over the age of 80, there's still an almost 90% chance that you'll survive coronavirus. What are some of the other risk factors? 
Well, obesity is another big one, possibly the third biggest risk factor. Unfortunately, we have had soaring rates of obesity in our countries over the last few decades. This is, of course, also a bad thing, placing us at a disadvantage in combating the virus. Other risk factors include smoking or other unhealthy lifestyle behaviours, and males as well are generally affected worse than females. What about a vaccine? We all hope that a vaccine will be ready soon, but keep in mind that vaccine often takes he take years, sometimes decades to develop. We are expediting this process, however, the reality is that vaccines for respiratory virus don't have an excellent track record. We have never found a vaccine for coronaviruses before. You have probably had lots of coronaviruses in your life. They cause common colds. COVID-19 is a new strain and new strains of viruses emerge all the time, which makes it so difficult to prevent and treat them. Let's take the flu. We have a vaccine for the flu virus and millions of people still keep getting the flu each year because of new strains. Then there's the problem of what will inevitably happen when there's a newly released vaccine that is administered to millions of people. Some people will experience side effects and reactions. You will start hearing these stories on the news when the vaccine is released. A lot of people may not want to administer a newly released vaccine to themselves and their children. And in our countries, we cannot force people to have a vaccine against their will anyway. So for all of these reasons, a coronavirus vaccine, whether it comes in one, two, three, however many years, is not going to be a magic solution or the end of the story. And even with a moderately successful vaccine, we'll still keep getting lots of local outbreaks afterwards, even if everyone takes it. A vaccine at best will help decrease symptoms in some people and help bring about herd immunity in the general population, which will be when enough people have either recovered from it or been vaccinated against it. We must therefore have realistic expectations of what can be achieved here and how this is going to pan out. If you work in healthcare, live in or near a big city or are in regular contact with the general public, the truth is you will probably be exposed to the virus at some stage, sooner or later. All you can do is take sensible precautions. Listen to public health advice and use simple hygiene measures like hand washing, not touching your face, wear masks when you are in close proximity to other people. If you are feeling unwell, isolate yourself from others. We need to take special care to protect the elderly and sick among us who are the ones most likely to suffer serious complications. And if there are localized overwhelming surges of cases, those places need to have localized containment strategies. We cannot stay in lockdown forever. And to avoid an economic catastrophe and impoverish millions, we are going to start needing to start moving again. Children need to go to school, universities need to educate, and people need to go to work. Other everyday things like meeting your families, going on vacation, playing sports matches, going to sports matches, concerts, and other social events will all need to restart at some point. In the meantime, we need to make it a priority to keep our bodies healthy and boost our immune systems any way that we can. Ramp up your vegetable and fruit intake, avoid saturated fats and processed foods. Watch your calories. Get outdoors and get some sunlight. Exercise at every opportunity. All these things will help make your body strong. So ladies and gentlemen, if you remember nothing else from this speech, remember these five things. Number one. COVID-19 is here to stay. Number two, no matter when we start moving again, cases will go up. Number three, overall risk of serious illness for the vast majority of people remains low and most people may not have any symptoms whatsoever. In the meantime, do everything you can to keep your body strong. Number four, a vaccine is nothing to hang your hat on. Number five, we can't stay in lockdown or isolation forever, and it's going to be a strategy of taking sensible precautions and protecting the most vulnerable. If I could click my fingers and make COVID-19 go away, I would, but it's with us, unfortunately. We need to deal with it now and minimize the risks in every way we can while steadily resuming our lives.